Well, guys, this is Pastor Larry again, and I have Jennifer here today, and this is Andy's oldest daughter. She was raised with this idea of speaking to God and bringing him into the decisions she had to make. And so, good morning. Good morning. And how are you today? Well. <laughs> We're well. I'm off camera, as you can see. I'm not there. I just want to focus on her beauty. Well, tell me what it was like when Dad came home from this meeting, and sometime in the process... You began, he began to call on you to talk to God. What was it like? Tell me what uh, it was like for you. What was you, 15, 14, somewhere like yeah, that? Yeah, 15. I don't really remember. I, I remember the first time that we talked to God. I don't remember what I talked to him about. Yeah. And I don't really remember. But about the whole idea. I mean, was it, it, was it, it strange? It made sense to me. All right. Because, I mean, it was kind of kind of weird i guess yeah but at the same time it was it didn't it didn't like the concept didn't blow my you mind you were in a christian home so yeah the, the concept didn't blow my mind it was uh, it made sense that he would talk back were you able to see dad and mom working this thing out and which made it kind of normal for you or was this new to the whole family at that same time? Um, it was new to the whole family at the same time. Because Dad, at least the first time he presented it, it was not long after he'd come home from the meeting. And he yep. told all of us kind of about it at the same time. I remember him kind of like sitting in his bed a lot. So I think he was dealing with a sure. lot of things at first. Just going through stuff. But Let me ask you, how, how, did it, how has it benefited you growing up? I mean, you were a teenager... And how did it, did it change your life and how? Yeah, I don't know how, uh, I mean, uh, I would say that I probably didn't really fully grasp the beauty and importance of it until I was out of the house probably when I moved. I mean, because I was learned about it when I was 15 and then I graduated at 17 right before I turned 18. So. Yeah. When I moved down to Tulsa, Oklahoma to go to Rama Bible Training Center, I dad rode with me because he wanted me to talk to God the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was not really <laughs> excited about. I just wanted to like have conversations. You just wanted to get there. I just wanted to yeah. get there. Um, but it was good. It was I was able to really just bring a lot of like things to God about you know, preparing for this new living uh, a day away from my parents, really, and uh, and just preparing for school. And it was it was cool because I was able to ask, like, really pray about and have deal with anything of why I would, wouldn't want to go to Tulsa in the first place because I didn't want to because I was I'm a homebody or not necessarily homebody, but I like to be close to my family, and so it was. So God difficult. gave you the courage to step out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Has there been any downside to this whole thing as a teenager? Did you ever ask God, can I? And he said no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, the downside I would say is the, it's one of those, it feels like a downside at first, but it's a beautiful thing in reality. And it's taught me just through my whole life how to really see like the times where I'm pressed are the times where I'm, I get to be someone new in him yep so i think but it was it's it's still randomly i'm not i'm not always really great at vulnerability so it's really that's what god's been working with me on a lot now in i can be really vulnerable with him and i can be really vulnerable with people in my close circle uh but the honesty of vulnerability in front of more people is difficult for me so that's where God's working with me right now but as like a teenager I just didn't like when dad would tell me I had to deal with something because I was really 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 good at faking it sure. and being okay but facing the issue <laughs> yeah. helped you grow up yeah yeah I and feel felt way more confident with him and in him and um and then learning to just really allow him to be a part of my every living breathing moments and now we have a three-year-old and an eight-year-old, or an 18-year-old, and um, that we adopted, yep. And I don't even know how I would be able to parent without knowing how to talk to God. Have you talked to your four-year-old about this yet? 
uh, he he taught he the listens to God. He listens to God about a lot of stuff. We've been having him listen to God since he was really since he was a baby, when we could tell he was getting upset, and it wasn't something that we were able to, like, help him with necessarily like he wasn't just hungry or whatever and so we just ask him to to listen to god and let him speak his truth and now it's really cute because he'll if he gets a bad attitude or if he's being disobedient or disrespectful one of the first things that we'll do is we'll tell him he needs to listen to god and we'll say can you close your eyes and listen to god lord will you speak your truth to him and he sits there and he goes <sighs> and then he's his attitude his demeanor everything will completely change and he just Moves changes <laughs> yep yep so and there was one time i was dealing with something in the car this last week i was joel and i were talking and we're i was dealing with something and andrew really wanted attention he kept saying stuff and joel said andrew mommy's talking to god and he said mommy's sad and i said yeah i'm just talking to god baby and andrew goes andrew talk of god and he sat back there and he closed his eyes and and listened too so did you ever have to acquaint him with what the voice of God or what the impression comes into your mind from God? Did you ever have to acquaint him with that? No. It was just automatic. Yeah. Yep. That's the beautiful part about yeah, children. Yeah. Because he just, I mean, we we just prayed that we've been able, we've prayed over him that he would be able to hear God's voice and um, and that God would comfort him and, and be there. And so he is, it's crazy cool to me that he gets to just grow up with this learning yeah and and it being like joel and i've talked about how it's going to be it's kind of silly to think like uh, it's it paints silly pictures in my head but like really beautiful amazing pictures just silly in the sense of uh, very different from now but like andrew's gonna be playing with friends and the friend's gonna get upset and his automatic thing will probably be something yep. like oh well what does god want to say yep. god and that says. kid's gonna be like what the <laughs> Yep, yep. You know, and, and it'll probably bring some backlash home. I mean, yeah, other yep. kids will tell him that's not real. Yeah. So, but the cool thing is how he knows he's being real. so founded in it that this is like we'd heard a long time ago how, um, or not that long ago, but with children, the first thing that they hear, the first time that they hear something, if they hear it from you or if they hear it from like school or friends or whatever, yep. the first time they hear something is what creates the filter that they put everything else through. Wow. So if your parents are the ones who teach you and raise you, you know, like even in this with talking to God, if that's what we've taught him right away initially, yep. then there's all of the, everything that everyone else is going to say is going to filter through that that he, what he's already been told. And that's and the very key. Of truth. <laughs> that's the key I'm trying to get across to people. Mm -hmm. Establishing an atmosphere so your child can have an experience with God yep. will always allow that child, even through adulthood, to yep. return to God and seek Him for truth. Yeah. And yep. you're finding that to be true with yeah. your children. Yeah. So. I'm going to ask you to think a little bit in this one because it, it hasn't happened. How would your life have been different if your dad hadn't have taught you how to hear from God, or uh, how to go to God. Uh, well, my dad's words are, I'd be swinging beads on a beach. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you, I you would, probably I'd, would. I'd be a wanderer. Um, I, I think that, I don't know that, um, my husband and I have talked about it a lot because my husband grew up in an abusive, in an abu abusive atmosphere with his father. Um, and so there, he had a lot of anger issues um, before he met you and had God, or you helped him talk to God about stuff. And um, so we've we've said before that if if it wasn't for God, uh, <laughs> you can edit this out if you want. But this is what we say: if it wasn't for God, I'd be a B word and he'd be an a hole. <laughs> like, it was. It's true because I, I um, you'd have just gone the way of the world. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really good at. I, I would have a, I ha, I feel like I'd still have a relationship with God in the the same way that I did when I was younger, where it was just I'd pray and I'd worship and I'd really want to be close to Him, but wouldn't know how, how yeah. to really be close to Him. Um, and the only time I'd really feel that would be during worship, um, when that is where I really feel like I really let Him flow sure. in as much as I'm giving out and i think that's why people like worship because yep. they don't know how to be intimate with god yeah until the that worship. moment yep yep and so i think that that would still i think i would still be like involved in church and and stuff like that but i think that 
I, I, I don't even know. I mean, I ask Maybe God everything. Not. Now, I ask him what to order off a menu because he just yep. knows way better than I do. So I like, I love watching him just do, not not be a, a puppeteer, but a best friend that Amen. has the best suggestions at Who all times. Who always time. knows the right way to go <laughs> yep. in every little situation. Yep. All right, one last question. Um, growing up, you probably had arguments with your brother and your sister. Mm -hmm. More, probably, yep, yep. right? Now, did talking to God help you resolve any of those arguments, or how did it change that dynamic? I don't think my brother and I had quite as many arguments because he and my personalities are a little more similar. And so, like, he used to be super annoying when he was tiny, but but he and I have been really close for years. And so we don't even really run into necessarily as many arguments every once in a while, I guess. But my sister and I, we are very, very different. So we've had, we've run into lots of arguments. And I think it's been really cool because we can talk to God and... It has definitely resolved things because he, or like when we ask God about, you know, different things, God will show both of us that we weren't even on the same level in what we were hearing. So like, I mean, for instance, there have been times where my sisters thought that I'd taken her husband's side in something when they've had like a disagreement and we'll be talking about it. And she thinks that I'm just siding automatically with her husband when in reality, God will show her that all I was doing was trying to like round out the perspective of things and i do think a little more like her husband so i can see why it would feel like i took his side but sure. there have been a lot of times where i've been able to do that or god's shown me that her intention wasn't to say something mean or bossy or whatever so it's been a lot of i mean god my sister when we were young we didn't have a good relationship. And I was I just going like, to say, do you love your sister now? Yeah, well, yeah. then he's made a difference. Yeah, he's made a big difference. <laughs> yep, we, we have a really, really good relationship. She's one of my best friends now. Anything you want to add about this whole process? Um, You're going to be talking to people who don't understand how to help their children talk to God. Okay. Um, I think the biggest, the biggest thing in helping any child talk to God or include God in their life is learning how to let God run your life. And um, out of that overflow. As the parent, you mean. Yeah, as yes, the parent. Yes, yes. As, as you begin to overflow. Because children grab onto your lack of peace as well. And so they'll mimic your, your lack of peace. So yep. sometimes when you get so frustrated because your kid is throwing a fit or, or just whining or whatever it might be, for me, there's a lot of times where I just stop myself and I go, oh, actually, I'm having an inner, inner fit, you know, like I'm, I'm personally upset. And so I, when, but when I'll deal with that, it might not, it might not necessarily, there have been times where I've dealt with something and my four, three-year-old's attitude just literally changes instantaneously. And I don't know, there've been times where I don't know if that's because it's literally his attitude changing or my piece, it, I don't see it the same way at all. And I know how to help him. Um, but there have been times where once I get to that point, I can turn to him and hold him and say, okay, God wants to talk to you too. And he's way more receptive because mom was receptive. Our Heavenly Father makes you be a better earthly mother. Yes. Oh, Amen. yeah. I have no idea. I, I don't know how. I, I have no idea how to parent without yep. God leading that. And, and Andrew watching him listen to God and and I've even like e I've even started having him ask God questions now when he's trying to make decisions because he's yep. he's uh he takes a really long time to make decisions sometimes and so I'll ask him if he wants um like for a, a little example one day Joel was stopping at Dairy Queen and he was going to pick up some lunch for us and I said Andrew do you want a hamburger or do you want chicken strips and he went, uh, and I said, do you want a hamburger or chicken strips, honey? Daddy's going to go through. And he was like, um, uh, and I said, how about you ask God? God, should he get a hamburger or chicken strips? And he goes, chicken. And I said, okay, chicken strips. Chicken. And it was cool because he actually wasn't super hungry, so he didn't eat his food. And so, but later when we got in the car, he was ready to eat when we were going to be driving somewhere. And chicken strips are way easier for him to eat in the car than a hamburger because he just dissects the hamburger anyways and eats the meat. So he, uh, so it was just really neat because he, I knew that he, he got what he was supposed to. And I asked God at the same time to like kind of confirm yep. too. I had sure. listened as well. And I got chicken and then he goes, chicken. And it was neat because I didn't actually say the order that I said it in. I said chicken strips first and then hamburger. And so it wasn't even that he was going with the last thing I said. It was... 
It was really neat. Sure. Well, we see you're not swinging beads on a beach anywhere. <laughs> yep. Praise the Lord. Yep. What are you doing? Um, we're pastoring a church. I run a photography business. Um, I've started a couple other businesses, and I'm writing and um, living life very intentionally, which is way easier, in, intentional in every way of taking time to be with my family and everything, but also taking time to just make sure that I'm positioned in a place to always be listening. What's the hearing. name of your book? Nurturing the Neglected. It's awesome. Yeah. You need to sign up for your daily or weekly, oh, what is it? my blog. Your blog, yeah, your yeah. blog. Yep. What's the name of it? Um, it's just jenniferjuni.com. Juni is J-U-N-I. You need to check it out. Yeah. Because she's as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Bless you. <laughs> Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed my interview with Jennifer, Pastor Jennifer, uh, Pastor Andy's oldest daughter. We got more to come. Uh, I want you to realize Jennifer lived this thing out, is living this thing out from a very young age. She was taught by her father, and uh, she is now in the process of teaching the next generation, teaching her ch children at a very young age to seek God for wisdom. If you're parenting without God's help, if you're parenting without teaching your children how to go to God and find wisdom, you are doing it the hard way. And uh, God's, God makes it easy. So friends, uh, tune in. <laughs> stay connected. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. We're going to be bringing you much, much more that will teach you to live in perfect peace so you can be quiet, confident, and, and have a more productive, peaceful life. And your children will be the benefit, benefactors of all that you learned today. So friends, God bless you. I'll see you next week on the next video. Hang in there. Bye-bye.